if you don't have a hole. Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis 37, 3 to 5. Israel loved Joseph, best of all his sons. He was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw their father loved him best of all their sons, they hated him so much they would not even greet him. One Joseph had a dream when he told his brother, listen to this dream. There were binding sheaves in the field. When suddenly my sheaves rose to an upright position and your sheath formed a ring around my sheath and bowed down to it. They answered, are you really going to make yourself king over us? His brothers asked him or impose rule on us. So they hated him all the more because of his talk about his dream. Then he had another dream. At this one too, he told his brothers, I had a dream. He said this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. My name is Tom Namey, and today we come to talk about all things that are possible with God. Joseph was a dreamer. He had a lot of dreams and his father loved him most because Joseph and Benjamin were the love of his life from the woman that he really loved. Joseph had 11 brothers with him, made 12. Joseph actually is a foreshadow of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. I also am like Joseph. I had a lot of dreams. I used to dream about being a successful businessman, a successful husband, father. I wanted to give the kids all the things I never had. I wanted to give them everything that I didn't have. I wanted them to be happy. I wanted them to be merry. I wanted them to be, to enjoy a relationship with me. But because of my anger, because of my stupidity, it led me to prison for 16 years for arson, and I became separated from God. As I became separated, separated from my family, separated from everyone, in the anger and the hostility, I drifted way far off. Joseph, on the other hand, was taken by his brothers, sold to the Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites sold him to the Egyptians. He was taken into Potiphar's house, and in Potiphar's house, he was there made as a man in charge. And then his wife insisted on having an affair with him. When Joseph rejected, she accused him of trying to rape her. And that led Joseph to prison. After being there for extensive time, the Lord proved Joseph to be true. He became in charge of the, of the inmates. And one day, the cupbearer of the king had a dream. And the baker had a dream. The baker had a dream that, it, that he saw birds lopping, picking on his head, while the cupbearer saw himself offering wine to the king. Well, Joseph interpreted the dream in three days that the cupbearer would be, that the wine, the man who served the wine to the king would return back to his position, and he told the baker in three days, your head will be lopped off, 
and you're, the birds are going to be picking at your head. And sure enough, it happened. As that happened, before the wine bearer returned, Joseph asked them to remember him to the king that he was innocent. Well, as time went on, the wine bearer forgot about Joseph, and one day the king had a dream. And the, and the dream needed to be interpreted. And no one could interpret the dream about the seven thin cows swallowing up fat, seven fat cows, and about seven stalks of heavy set corn were swallowed out by thin stalks of corn. Seven bales. And the king was perplexed and no one could interpret the dream. And then the wine bearer remembered that Joseph knew how to interpret dreams. And he called him up and he proved to be true and he gave him the secret of success. How to harvest 15% of the crop every year to save the people of Egypt from famine. And then Joseph became governor. And Joseph saved his people, the Egyptian, from famine and even his own family. In my life as I went to prison, in the first 10 years of my life, I was full of anger and hostility and I forgot who I was and all I used to think about was revenge. And one day I had an encounter with the true King of Kings and Lord of Lord Jesus Christ and I the Lord changed my life instantly and I went into an average man, into a man that knew the scripture. As I became enlightened by the scripture, joy and peace filled my life. And as I worked in prison, day after day, I remember the words of Paul echoing in Philippians 1, 1.13. He said, My imprisonment have turned out to be rather good that I may spread the gospel throughout the Roman Praetorium. Well, it's not the Roman Praetorium. Now, I'm in prison, in jail, in Michigan, at Pine River and Mount Pleasant. But you know what? I took every opportunity to preach to men and to save souls at that moment. You know why? Because the word of the Lord in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, says all things work out for the good for those who love God because they are called to be predestined according to his glorious and riches in Christ Jesus. They are called for his purpose. Joseph was called for that purpose to lead his people out of bondage, out of famine. And Joseph knew the Lord God and he had faith in the Lord God. When everything failed, I'm sure Joseph had doubt, had fears at some time. And he doubted, where are you, Lord? Why is this happening to me? I'm an innocent man. I lived a good, holy life. I have not done any wrong. Why is this going on? But in the back of his mind, he knew that one day his dreams will set him free. He knew one day that the dreams he had about him are going to come to because this almighty God that like given him that vision is going to come to and all of us like Joseph. All of us like Joseph, we need to hold on to that dream. We need to hold on to it and believe what God says in his word and his promises. And hold on to, it, to the dream that we have. That God's word is true and is eternal. After I became aware of God's word and Holy Spirit that cleansed me and sanctified me. I did not only witness the inmate, I also witnessed the officers all around me. For five years at that prison, and then for seven months after that, and when I came home, I started doing what I was supposed to do, evangelize, evangelize everywhere. We are all called for what? For his purpose. And God turns all things for the good for those who love God. I'm like Joseph too. I remember when I was in church when I was a little boy. I used to be an altar boy. And how I would serve at church. And how, how my heart would be drawn to the word and know God and to live with God. And I wanted this. 
But you know the world comes along and you get carried by the wind of the world. You become successful in business and you want to own things and you want to have things and you forget about God. We forget. We have the tendency to forget because we are human. But blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be our God. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. He never forgets about any of us. Again and again, again and again, he looks for the lost sheep and he brings them home. He looks for the lost sheep. He leaves the 99 and he goes searching for the one that's been lost. And he brings us home. Glory to his name. Joseph got an opportunity to save his people. And I got an opportunity to minister to a lot of men to save them, to bring them to the truth. Some men never believed in Jesus. Some men were killers, never believed in Christ. Some men that were doing natural life. Some men never had hope of going home. Some of them died in prison. They might have died physically, but they did not die spiritually. Because God gave them an opportunity to hear the word and be saved. And that's what God did. Joseph saved his people from famine. But God gave us the Holy Spirit to set people free. And the word said, whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. You and I, we have an obligation to set free our families, our neighbors, our community, one person at a time. To let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. To let them know that we have a dream. And when you have that dream, to hold on to it. Because the word of God is true. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in doubt because you are in a dark hour right now. Maybe your business is not going good. Maybe your health is not going good. Maybe a lot of things. Young Joseph went to prison and 13 years of his life was gone and never knew. Hey, you know what? Where are you, God? He knew one day that God would prove him to be true that one day God was going to set him free. He knew it. He held on to that vision that God has given him. Do you have a vision? In Habakkuk chapter 2, the Lord tells the prophet, if you have a vision, you need to hold on to it. And if you have a vision, write it down. And make a note for it because there is still time for the vision to come through. Is your vision coming through? Have you ran out of visions? Don't be afraid. There's still time. Because what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's always going to be freedom through Christ Jesus. He came to set us all free. And free indeed we are. Only by the blood of the Lamb and only by the cross. As long as we stay focused on Christ Jesus, as long as we stay focused on the Word of God, as long as we stay focused that we are called according to His purpose. You know what Joseph told his brothers the last thing? In Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, even though you meant it harm for me, God meant it for good to achieve His present end, the survival of many people. Therefore have no fear I will provide for you and for your children by speaking kindly to them. He reassured them. My beloved, I pray that the Lord will bless you, guide you, and keep you. And remember, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Do not have doubt and no fear. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have hope, if you don't have love, if you don't have faith, Don't have
forgiveness. If you don't have Christ, 